Hey, what's up? OG here. So what if I told you you could get Ensys to run on your MacBook? Would you believe me? Probably not, because at first, even me, I was in disbelief. But throughout this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it and how you can get Ensys or any other software, quite frankly, to run on your MacBook without any giving issue. So let's talk about what you'll need first. Now, of course, you'll need your MacBook. Don't really matter if it's an M1 or M2, but the M2 might perform just a little bit slower than the M1 Max. If you have an M1 Max, great, like I do. But if you don't, it's okay, everything will work fine. And of course, you'll need Parallel, which is a virtual machine that allows you to run Windows on your computer without the need to reboot your entire Mac or share your drive. But if you don't know what Parallel is, go on their website. They have more than enough information on their website on how to install it. And if you're a student, check with your university because they might offer a discounted version or even a free version of Parallel, which my university does. So don't go and pay the full price if you don't have to. Anyway, let me explain why Ensys isn't working for you, which might apply to other software like SolidWorks, which I already have a video on how to install SolidWorks on your MacBook. Link will be in the description below. Go ahead and watch it if you need SolidWorks also. So here's the problem you might be facing. Parallel is a virtual machine like I've stated before, and Ensys doesn't like communicate to virtual machine that might be able to communicate to the proprietary device, which is your Mac. Now think of the Mac drive as the Pacific Ocean and Parallel as the Atlantic Ocean. Although they occupy the exact same area, they really don't like communicating with one another, which is why Ensys isn't working for you. There's a clear distinction between the Pacific and the Atlantic based on the color of the water. And even with the naked eye, you can clearly see a distinction between the Pacific and the Atlantic. So Ensys isn't able to tell the difference when you're sharing files between your MacBook and your Parallel. So step one before anything is make sure you go to Parallel and unshare any given share folders between your MacBook and your window very quickly, which I'm currently showing you how to do. All you gotta do is go to your Parallel settings and uncheck share folders for Mac and make sure sharing folders between Windows is also unchecked. Now remember that invisible line that you could see with your naked eye? That's exactly what you're doing by making sure that Parallel can't share folders between your MacBook. Now it is an inconvenient because you'll need to use your flash drive or your email or your Google Drive to move files around, but at the end of the day, it will allow Ensys to install perfectly and also SolidWorks or any other software that you might wanna install on your MacBook. To fully take advantage of your M1 Max, make sure you set your graphic to the highest settings possible and also your RAM, put it at 26 gig. Now, if you don't have an M1 Max, once again, don't worry, Ensys will still work for you, but some simulation might be a little bit slower than usual. All the links that will be used throughout this video will be in the description below. The first thing you'll need to download is x64, not ARM64. Now, even if you have Windows 11 ARM64 like I do, don't worry, make sure you download x64 since they include both in it anyway. Once your download is over, make sure you restart your computer. Now, don't just close out parallel. Make sure you restart it like you'll restart your own computer. Go into the power settings and restart parallel altogether because x64 needs to update to fully install within your virtual machine. Now you're ready to install Ensys. Go ahead, download Ensys wherever you're installing it. Now remember, I'm installing student version R2, so your step might be a little bit different, but everything should be the exact same, technically speaking. Ensys should be in your download folder as a zip file. Make sure you extract all before you start installation. Now go into your extract folder and scroll all the way down till you find a setup file. Make sure you right click on it and run as administrator, which you'll see why later anyway. Now go ahead and follow all the typical prompt that you would have received if you had installed any given other software on your computer anyway. When it comes to your directory, you don't really need to change anything, but if you do want to change the directory where you're installing Insys, that might cause some issue. I didn't bother with it, I just left it as is. Now once you get to your installation window, you might see that Insys is stuck at 0% for a while. Now on the MacBook, it was about four minutes to five minutes, but on your computer it might be faster or slower. Don't worry, it should give you an error saying that x64 is unable to install. If you remember correctly, we already did that, so don't worry too much. Just select the appropriate response that you need to select just so you could move forward with the installation. It will not bug Ensys whatsoever because we already installed S64 earlier. Once you pass that error message, Ensys should start installing everything perfectly fine. It might take a few minutes though, don't worry, because Ensys for me on the M1 Max took about six minutes to install. So depending on your machine, it might be a bit quicker or it might be a bit slower. I've had friends, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So make sure that you're keeping an eye on it and make sure that your computer don't go to sleep when you're installing it. Once everything's over, go ahead and open Workbench. Now, as you can see, everything is working perfectly fine, but you might be like, well, OG, what the heck is the font? Why isn't it looking normal? And that's the next issue we're gonna have to address. If everything's looking perfectly fine on your Workbench, go ahead, congratulations, you have Insys on your computer, but 
the next step only applies to the people where their font is looking the way that mine's currently looking. Go ahead, close Workbench and locate it by right clicking on Workbench, go to File Location. Once you're inside the File Location folder, locate Workbench, once again, like I said, and right click on it, go to Property. Now click on Compatibility, then click on High DPI Settings and override High DPI Setting and select Enhanced Screen, which should fix all the issue that you're currently having. Now close it out once again and click OK and Apply. Go ahead and reopen Workbench and everything should look perfectly fine. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.